uh, community is still reeling for the news that Pastor Tony Evans is stepping away from his church. And tonight, there's no timetable for his return. Yeah, Evans has served as senior pastor at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship for nearly 50 years. He shared the news privately with his congregants Sunday morning and then went public yesterday. Evans says he's stepping away due to sin from years ago. Tony Evans, the longtime leader of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship and a best-selling author, has announced that he is stepping back from his ministry due to a sin he committed years ago. In a June 9 statement to his church, which was posted on its website, Evans said, the foundation of our ministry has always been our commitment to the word of God as the absolute supreme standard of truth to which we are to conform our lives. When we fall short of that standard due to sin, we are required to repent and restore our relationship with God. A number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. I am therefore required to apply the same biblical standard of repentance and restoration to myself that I have applied to others. Well-known Dallas pastor Dr. Tony Evans stepped aside from leading the 10,000-member Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Evans cited a past sin as the reason for the move after more than 40 years at the pulpit. Our for Stephen Dial live with what Evans told the congregation. Stephen. Yeah, the news was a big shock to the faith-based community nationwide. And Evans, who recently got married, said that he committed no sin, I mean, no crime, but committed a sin. Sunday, renowned Dallas pastor Dr. Tony Evans told his congregation he would be stepping away from his senior pastoral duties. Evans spoke to the congregation, but it was not part of the recording posted to the church website, which featured lead associate pastor Bobby Gibson. Good morning, Oak Cliff. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Evans grew the congregation of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship to 10,000 members, serving as pastor for more than 40 years. Evans set the foundation of his ministry as the commitment to the word of God as the supreme standard. In a statement, he went on to say, a number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. I am therefore required to apply the same biblical standard of repentance and restoration to myself that I have applied to others. There's been much speculation as to what specifically caused Evans to step aside and for how long. He did not address that directly, but said, while I have committed no crime, I did not use righteous judgment in my actions. In light of this, I am stepping away from my pastoral duties and am submitting to a healing and restoration process established by the elders. Evans Northern Church have said what exactly happened, but Evans did say he did not commit a crime. He just didn't use righteous judgment in his actions. I mean, you're a big time pastor. You got a lot of people looking up to you. Tell us something, man. This step back from his ministry is a part of a process of spiritual recovery and restoration supported by the church elders. Pastor Bobby Gibson and the elders will provide interim leadership during this period. All right, today we are diving into all things church-related and even Baptist-related more specifically. Yesterday, I saw the news on X that Tony Evans is stepping down from his pastoral role. This is a really big deal. Dr. Tony Evans is the longtime pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, a large church, a mega church even in Dallas. And he has stepped down from his role because of a secret past sin. And I say a secret sin because in the statement that he released on his website and that now has been widely circulated, he really doesn't say what this past sin was that has now come to light and has caused him to step down. So here is an excerpt of that statement. And the excerpt is pretty long, but this is only about a third of what he said in total. The foundation of our ministry, he writes, has always been our commitment to the word of God as the absolute supreme standard of truth to which we are to conform our lives. When we fall short of that standard due to sin, we are required to repent and restore our relationship with God. A number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. I am therefore required to apply the same biblical standard of repentance and restoration to myself that I have applied to others. I have shared this with my wife, my children, and our church elders, and they have lovingly placed their arms of grace around me. 
While I have committed no crime, I did not use righteous judgment in my actions. In light of this, I am stepping away from my pastoral duties and am submitting to a healing and restoration process established by the elders. This will afford me a needed time of spiritual recovery and healing. So there are a lot of guesses that we could probably make if it wasn't something that was criminal. That means it probably wasn't financial. And so we can maybe deduce what possibly happened here, but we just don't don't know. He hasn't offered any specificity here. No matter what it is, the fact that he is stepping down from this role is really significant. This is a blow to a lot of people. This is obviously a blow to his church. Uh, His impact is huge. He has pastored this congregation for almost 50 years. Most of us cannot imagine doing the same thing for 50 years. Of course, that's a lot longer than I've even been alive. So being committed to any vocation, but certainly the demands of ministry, it's very impressive. Just that number speaks for itself. He has also led a teaching ministry for more than 40 years called the Urban Alternative. It's reached millions of people around the world. He's done a lot of good work over the years. I am not someone who has listened to him or read him consistently, but I did start paying attention to him more over the past several years as he has very intentionally spoken into the political climate and the political, cultural, social moment that we're in. He has done so, I think, with a lot of care and a lot of intentionality. I don't know that I would say that I've agreed with everything that he has said, but I can commend him for the courage that it takes to step into these very controversial waters when a lot of pastors are too cowardly to do that. They don't want to shepherd their congregations in that way, even when their congregations are demanding clarity, are demanding to be led, to be helped navigate these turbulent waters of the culture and political wars. A lot of pastors say, oop, Nope, I don't want to offend people. I don't want to make people mad. So I'm just not going to speak to that or I'm going to dance around it. And he didn't do that. And I appreciate that uh, about him. Other pastors will jump wholesale into the progressive narrative because that's the popular thing to do. And he also didn't do that. Um, There are multiple things, I'm sure, maybe theologically, politically, that we don't agree on. But I know a lot of people have really been positively impacted by the work that God has done through his ministry. And I'm thankful to that or for that. Uh, All that to say, I do think from my perspective, take that for what it's worth, that he owes his congregation more clarity than his statement gave. He may not owe the internet clarity, but I do think that he owes his congregation specificity. I remember a couple of years ago, we talked about it on this show when Matt Chandler had to come forward and say that he had fallen short of the biblical standard for a Christian, a biblical standard for a husband and a pastor. He stepped down from his pastoral position because of that. And he had to say what he had done, which was engage in messages with a woman at his church that were not sexual in nature, but he described them as too familiar, as maybe bordering on flirtatious, just not appropriate for married people, of course, joking. And he had to admit this, confess this in front of his congregation. And this was uh, put online. And of course, it was talked about in the media. I'm sure that that was not easy. That was not easy for him. That takes a lot of humility. It was not easy for his family, I'm sure. But I see that as part of the consequence of unwise choices, especially when you are in a position of shepherding and authority. That is part of the repercussions of not acting in a way that exemplifies the self-control and the above reproach way of life that really we're all supposed to lead as Christians, but again, especially 
pastors. So I don't think pastors, as I said, are obligated to confess to every single person on earth, but yes, to the congregation that she leads. So maybe Dr. Evans will be more specific and clear about that to them in the future. I'm not sure. Maybe they have their reasons right now for the vagueness, but just from my vantage point reading what I've read, I think that he owes more specificity than this. The euphemisms just cause, I think, a lot of confusion and even more instability, a lot of questions, unfortunately, rumors, gossip, and things like that. Um, So I hope that he clarifies. But whatever that looks like, we should pray for Dr. Evans, pray for his church. We should pray that Evans, uh, that he would be sanctified, that he would be built up by God's grace, that he would be spurred towards holiness, Uh, pray for his family, pray for their strength, pray that the gospel continues to go out from his ministry, all the resources that they've created over the past half century. Uh, that it would go out unhindered, that his congregants would not waver even a centimeter in their faith, that they would remember that Christ is the anchor, that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Our faith rests upon a perfect Savior who will never let us down, who will never fail to meet the standard on our behalf, and who... um, will never, ever fail us in any way. Pastor Tony Evans has stepped away from his preaching duties at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship due to a sin he acknowledged committing several years ago. Evans admitted his imperfection, explaining that while he did not commit any crimes, he did not meet the high biblical standards required for his role. The timing of his statement has prompted some speculation about whether he was attempting to get ahead of potential leaks he did not disclose specific details about the sin, but clarified that it did not involve any criminal activity. Evans emphasized the biblical standard required for church leaders and the need for repentance and restoration. This decision was supported by the church elders, who underscored their responsibility to maintain the church's integrity and accountability according to Scripture. During Evans' period of spiritual recovery, interim leadership will be provided by Pastor Bobby Gibson and the church elders.